I always struggle with is finding something to show you guys during the day to kind of complete the sort of day vlog but you know I just don't really be doing shit during the day that's why our side quests usually consist of Walmart or fixing my car I could show you guys my new drone because the the old drone it it just doesn't fly like it used to so now we're back with the same shit I feel like the dream attracts a lot of people who like to do the same stuff every day because like you know basically when you're lifting you're going in doing the same shit every day eating the same foods every day if you're taking it seriously that's why i feel like someone like sam Solik does really well is because you know all his videos are basically the same thing every day but you know that's what a lot of people who are into the gym enjoy i've seen a couple posts on instagram or tiktok they're kind of like pick me post like oh man I feel bad for me and it was something along the lines of like man how sad is it that some people's highlight of their day is going to the gym or that's the thing they look forward to most I just think that type of stuff's so dumb because most most people don't have anything to look forward to most days so having you know something to look forward to every single day you know I think it's kind of a blessing I don't know normal life like 95% of the time it's pretty fucking boring and kind of repetitive so having the gym to look forward to you know that's a that's a dub in my book i just think that kind of stuff is so dumb just like oh man feel bad for me all i have to look forward to is the gym like people are just looking for internet pity or sympathy i i think that type of shit is just come on grow up i know people be going through things and people cope in different ways but i promise whatever you're dealing with it will pass and you still gotta live with yourself after, so you know you want to minimize the self damage you do by like kind of making yourself look goofy on the internet. You want to minimize the amount of things that are gonna make you look back in 20 years and just fucking cringe and die inside a little bit just because of thinking about something you did that nobody actually remembers, but you remember, and it eats you up inside. Anyways, 
Hopefully in the next vid, maybe we'll have something more interesting to do during the day, but not today. So I'm gonna just see you guys tonight when we go train. Okay, so a lot of you guys ask me how to get stronger. Obviously because my lifts are, you know, extremely impressive. I'm kidding, I'm more like a high tier casual. Now to start with the basics, I'd say you wanna do your lifts, like your squat bench and deadlift twice a week. If the deadlift is super taxing for you, like it, you got maybe super short T-Rex arms, you could probably do it once a week. For bench, you could probably do more like three times a week. But one problem I see with a lot of newer people who are interested in powerlifting, I wouldn't even say I'm a powerlifter, you know, I, I, I just enjoy getting the squat bench and deadlift up, but I've never like competed or something like that. But a lot of people, they dive straight into like super specific powerlifting programming and training without building any sort of foundation for themselves. If you're new to lifting, you need to take the time to do the bodybuilding and build a bunch of muscle. At the end of the day, the thing that's gonna be lifting the weights is your muscle. Like your technique and programming can be great, but it's still your muscle that's moving the weight. And a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle. I've always trained squat bench and deadlift since I've started, but at the same time, you gotta be doing the hypertrophy stuff or you're kinda just gonna bottleneck yourself in terms of progress. I see a lot of newer lifters who, you know, you guys will DM me and be like, oh, I've been training for six months. I think I'm ready to cut and it's like, what the fuck? This is just my philosophy. Everyone has their own goals and like what they're training for. But if you wanna lay a good foundation so you can have a good physique and be strong as fuck, you should be willing to be in a calorie surplus for like three years at least. People be rocking the fucking Minecraft skeleton, starving Marvin physique thinking, I think it's a good time to go, go on a cut. Everyone has their individual goals and looks they're going for. But in my opinion, if you are trying to go and get as jacked and strong as possible, stick to a surplus for a long fucking time. Now, obviously, if you got like excess body fat or like overweight, you can 
you know, cut that down and then build up from there. It's important to take the time and put in the hours of, you know, doing the bodybuilding training and being a calorie surplus for a long time. So you got some fucking size to you so you can move some weight. Now I'd say the basics if you're new is just, you know, train them like twice a week, like I said, and then I'd track your lifts, and like open the notes app and be like, oh, four by eight on bench, I did 185. And then like maybe two weeks, three weeks later, you try 190 and just kind of slowly work your way up. Being a whittle guy isn't gonna benefit you that much if you're trying to push some heavy weight. When it comes to bodybuilding and powerlifting, they're, they're low key like two sides of the same coin. Like powerlifters and bodybuilders just both want to be bigger and stronger is just like for different reasons really strong power lifters they still do plenty of bodybuilding stuff and they you know on go through phases of calorie surpluses so they can fucking grow and then on the other side bodybuilders are doing progressive overload and trying to slowly up the weights it might not be in squat bench and deadlift it's probably more bodybuilding specific movements but it's still like the same shit. Progressive overload isn't what causes muscle growth, it's more of the result of muscle growth. It's like, it's proof of concept. Like if you can if you can add five pounds on a machine considering you know all the variables are consistent, that probably means the corresponding muscle group got bigger. As you get more advanced, you wanna be more specific with your training. Like for me, I'm not running any sort of powerlifting program. It would definitely benefit me and I'd probably get stronger if I, did more hyper specific powerlifting program maybe one day i don't know i like i enjoy training the way i do that's my uh that's my problem also i know a lot of you guys don't take things outside the gym seriously like you'll be a fucking maniac in the gym and then you'll eat like four calories when you get home you gotta you gotta eat and sleep and be hydrated those them shits are important anyways quick plug if you guys want to learn how i shoot my videos or all my camera gear I have a Patreon linked below and I'm posting a few videos in there every month going over that stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take some pre-workout and we're going to go. I'm going to try 635 for five. That'll be a PR. Bye. I know I said 635 for five, but I'm also a liar. So basically, holy shit, I've never had this happen before, but when I went to do the lift, on the third rep, I like almost blacked out. I've never blacked out before, but I'm guessing that was about to happen. Cause I got like all warm and fuzzy and then like everything kind of got a bit dark. I don't think it's like an iron deficiency or something. I mean, there's obviously plenty of iron, but hey, that's the uh, best 635 for three I've ever had. I think, I think, I probably could have gotten two more, like 
90% sure. Maybe next time. Now we're just gonna drop the weight down to 585 and I wanna do like six to eight-ish. We'll see, I'm gonna do that, bye. Okay, so the same thing basically happened on like the fifth, sixth rep. Like I just like feel like trash in my stomach. I don't know. I've never had that happen. Okay, so basically with my belt, I have a size small SPD belt. I should have bought medium when I first got it, but I fit into the size small, so I got a small. And I've been on the last loops of it for a minute and with our recent putting on 20 pounds over the winter, it's gotten extremely tight. So last night I actually drilled in some extra holes on it. I don't, I don't know if you can really tell which ones are the ones I put in. But yeah, today is the first day where the belt actually fits normal. Maybe, but maybe that's why deadlifts feel kind of weird is because I've never uh, used it like that. But it honestly feels really good. It's just those last few, like two reps where I like, I start feeling like I'm about to fucking pass out. I don't know, I've never had that before. Maybe I just, I've been eating the same shit. I, I don't know what's happening. Anyways, we're gonna do more sets. One of the craziest phenomena, am I saying that word right? Maybe, that I see in like today's social media age is the amount of like podcasts that people start and people will blow up entirely off their looks. You know, it's something you can monetize and capitalize on, just part of social media. But they'll blow up off their looks alone and then it's like time to start a podcast and put my opinions into the world. And the sad truth of the world is people will look up to someone just because of how they look. You know, whether it's girls or dudes, you know, it happens in, a fit, in the fitness space a lot. You know, someone will be jacked and then have literally nothing else behind them besides being like shredded and jacked and people will like idolize them. And aspiring to have a good physique is like something worth aspiring to, you know, that's valid. But then they'll just start putting the most brain dead horrible opinions into the world and people you know will listen to them because they look um, look up to these people for these things or certain podcasts will be started by let's say not the most wholesome type of woman and they'll be putting their opinions in you know the word is influencer for a reason because they influence people in like how they think make sure if you're valuing someone's opinion like there's a reason for it like Oh, this guy's, like, some people are, you know, they have fucking great physiques, but they're pretty fucking brain dead. Some of them, not everyone. And then, you know, people will listen to the things they say just because they aspire to have a physique like them. Just make sure, 
when you are listening to someone, like, what is the reason you, like, respect the things they're saying? Or on the other side, you'll see, like, these podcasters, like, the super red-pilled type of people, and they'll bring on, like, the most brain-dead girl to debate, and, like, they'll make them look stupid in the debate, and it's like, of course you did. You picked, like, the most fucking empty-headed person you could, you know, bring someone on who's got something, like, going on up there, and it's probably going to be different. The best thing is to just think for yourself. You know, don't even listen to my opinions. Go out and form your own opinions on whatever you see and think of why you think this way. It's important because there's a lot of like really stupid stuff and I probably say a lot of really stupid stuff myself anyways. I don't know, that's just what's on my mind right now because I see a lot of these random clips. We got like two more sets. I'm gonna go do those and stop hating for now. That's uh, all for deadlifts. I don't know why, but when it comes to high reps on deadlifts, they've always been pretty easy for me. Like I could do like 12 and be fine. Like I'll be a little out of breath, but I won't be like fucking dying on the floor having an asthma attack. If I do like a set of seven on squats, that fucking kills me. Like I'm rolling around on the floor gasping for breath. Lately, I've been really strong on my accessory movements, like the like back hypertrophy movements. Um, I don't know, I've just been, I've been doing progressive overload up in the weights. Um, it does kind of suck because I'm like getting the full stack on most things. So it's harder to add weight. Because some of them you can't like add a plate from the outside like some of these cable machines. But yeah, that's, uh, we're going to do some dumbbell wheels and then some other shit. Bye.
I think human consciousness is a tragic misstep in evolution. We became too self-aware, programmed with total assurance that we are each each somebody. When in fact, everybody's nobody. For six, six months, months, I couldn't sleep with insomnia. Nothing is real. Everything is far away. Everything. You were the copy of the copy of the copy. The copy. So I've had a few of you guys hit me up and ask me like, man, should I take these stupid peptides or research chemicals like things like MK or HGH and clomiphene, things like that. I see a lot of uh, influencers advertising that stuff is like, oh, it's going to get you jacked naturally. It's like boost your test through the fucking roof and human growth hormone through the moon with no side effects. I promise you guys. That stuff is not going to get you jacked. All the people who are saying this and selling these kind of things to you are uh, also on steroids. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but they're promoting these things when they didn't even use them to get jacked or anything like that. It's like, how the fuck would they know? Just, just know if someone's pushing that garbage onto you, they don't give a shit about you. They're just trying to make, make a bag. I'm sorry to break it to you guys, but there is no secret magic to getting shredded and jacked. I mean, there's real steroids. I mean, obviously those work. You still gotta put in the work, but they, obviously they fucking work. I don't know if this still happens, but when I was younger, I remember when I went to the supplement store for the first time, a lot of these supplement stores, they'll prey on people who are very clearly newer lifters. So I go into the supplement store looking like I just survived the Holocaust and I just wanted to get creatine and the dude upsold me on so much shit. And I was so naive because I was new to the lifting. It was like, oh, you need the BCAAs. You need the intra workout carb. You need the mass gain of protein. Like, I walked out spending my entire seven fifty an hour Burger King paycheck on garbage that isn't going to do shit for me. What young Nick P really needed was a double cheeseburger. Take that money that you would buy supplements with and buy some real food first. That's gonna do more, training hard and getting some good food in you, it's gonna do way more for you than any fucking research chemical bullshit peptide. When I see these people promoting that stuff, it's the same sort of just preying on newer lifters who don't know any better. If you're watching my YouTube videos, you can't be stupid or naive, don't fall for that shit. For me, I hardly fucking use supplements. Like, I use pre-workout, creatine, and then some vitamins. And none of those are essentials for getting gains. You know, I just love pre-workout. That's just like my favorite thing. It's just like, it's part of my gym ritual type shit. I don't know, some of you guys might not even know what I'm talking about because we all just get different content thrown in our faces all day. But I get like a million fucking people being like, man, L-carnitine got me fucking super shredded. It's the most magical thing on the earth. None of these people used any of these products before they were able to promote it and make money off it. In short, don't be naive, don't be stupid. Learn from my young Nick P mistakes. Take that money and buy like grass-fed ground beef. That's gonna do way more for you. Um, I'ma see you guys at home.
What's up? You guys ever find the whole behavior of a person while waiting for a package to come super interesting? It's like you've already ordered it and you you know you know it's what you want to buy, but it's like you gotta watch all the videos on it. You gotta watch the unboxing, you know, the ASMR, you know, vicariously live through these videos for the day and a half you're waiting for it. I'd be doing that with stupid shit. Like I, I bought some hard drives the other day just to, you know, put a bunch of footage on. And it's I was like, man, I am so fucking excited to put my files on these. Also, it's got this rubbery orange texture to stop it from breaking when it drops. So I'm excited to fucking drop it also. Uh, yeah, that's what's going on in my life. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This should be a longer one. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you got any questions, drop them below. I'll answer all your guys' questions in the comments. Um, if you guys want some clothing or you guys want to support me, you can use code Nick on Young LA Huge Supplements. And check out Patreon if you guys want to learn how I film these videos. I'm going to post a few tutorials every month. But yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Listen, you fuckers, you screwheads. Here's a man who would not take it anymore. Here is someone who stood up.